I have another question. Of course you do, Chris. So <laughs> it's uh Did Lance put you up to this? No, I'm but kidding. I'm kidding. No. <laughs> um so bouncing off that right hip shift, I have an older female client who mm -hmm. she is great with deadlifting. She's extremely strong with deadlifts. She's progressed very quickly over these past mm -hmm. two months. Mm -hmm comfortable for her, etc. She is having trouble with squats. Like it's such a harder um, movement. She's just so much weaker in it. Like we started um, like plate reaching, progressed mm -hmm. to cable reach. And then now we're at like 10, 15 pound goblet squats to a box. Nice. She has that same thing where she, her right glute will tap the, like the bench first. Yep. And she, she's, she's mindful of it and it's a minor like an like a half inch where it taps first and i just don't know if i need to correct it because it, it was happening even during like the the plate reach and she's had it this whole time mm -hmm. so and mm -hmm. she doesn't have that situation when she hinges so i was curious right. to hear your opinion whether or not that's something to worry about or to even focus on <clears throat> so so whether it's something you worry about is your call entirely you get to see her uh, actually move right so I will give you credit for that. Um, but actually the cue that Jim just brought up is a very, very common cue that we can use. So, so what's happening is that she's internally, internally rotating more on the right side than she is on the left side as she sits down. And so what happens is you have um, a, a reduced eccentric strategy on the left that allows the, the back of the hip to, to lengthen and allow her to sit back. So what? So it looks like her right hip is sitting a little bit lower as she squats, right? And so if you get a little bit more concentric activity on the right hip as she sits down, then maybe that's enough to, to even it out. Maybe you need to give her um, like a, a, a right knee down half kneeling activity that, that um, um, allows her to increase the ability of that left hip to uh, lengthen. So, so to eccentrically orient the posterior left hip, you can put her in, in right knee down half kneeling activities and then squat her and see if that doesn't help. Because that's an easy way to, to, to access left hip internal rotation. Okay. So again, there's, there's multiple strategies here. Um, and it may just be, you just do the exercise in a little bit different sequence. You get a little bit different muscle activity. Um, in the in the left hip to, to right hip, and then that allows you to um, even out the squat if you think it's that big a deal, right? Because a squat is not a hinge, so so right. they aren't there. One is one is a, a loading pattern, and one is a propulsive pattern, and so so they shouldn't have the same muscle activity. So um, if she doesn't have a shift in a hinge, then chances are you're getting the muscle activity on the right side when she hinges and you're not getting it um, when she squats. And so you might need to, to teach her a new strategy on the left side. Did Jim say bringing in the foot or pointing the toe in a little bit more? So it, it, it would depend on what you're seeing. And so, um, but the, the goal would be to uh, place um, a, so if you think about a tripod foot, have you guys talked about that? Okay. So if you load the, the, the medial aspect of a tripod foot a little bit more aggressively, um, that's going to externally rotate up the chain, right? Up the lower extremity and, and may provide you an element of that. So maybe it's just a matter of you cueing the, the, the sensation on the bottom of the foot or the, or the foot position. And maybe that cleans up everything that you want, right? Again, without having to chase another exercise, you just give a, a, a cue. Um, and then if that doesn't work, then maybe you need the ability to internally rotate the left hip. And then I would say, let's go to the half kneeling strategy and, and, and that'll probably you know, allow you to gain what you're looking for there. Does it matter what activity to do during half kneeling or just the position? Yeah, it does help. Um, but you know, if you do like a, uh, uh, a right knee down half kneeling cable press with an exaggerated reach. Um, a lot of times, so to, to, to create the exaggerated reach, you have to internally rotate the left hip. I mean, so it's, again, it's, it's again, you're chasing 
um, a, a change in mobility, but using a nice gym exercise that feels like they're still working out. And so I don't have to do any funky mobility stuff. I can just build it right into the program. So um, you do a chop across the body that way. Sometimes you can use, you know, some form of, of stabilized activity. Some people can do um, a, uh, a kettlebell chop and lift or a halo or something. A lot of times it's just a matter of positioning the pelvis and, and challenging them to hold the position. And if they hold it effectively, you get the muscle activity that you're seeking, right?